To our friends in the restaurant industry, we're with you. Now is the time to lean on one another for support while we navigate these difficult circumstances together. I invite you to take a break from the stress and worry we're all experiencing and enjoy this new episode of Check, Please! Bay Area, recorded earlier this year. The broth is just so beautiful. Can you ever really go wrong with bacon? Never. Not in my opinion. And then you stick the spoon in it and you see that the steam come out. I like big buns and I cannot lie. Yeah. That's That's right. Right. Yeah. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized full service personal and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. In this episode, we revisit eateries that you may have missed the first time around. From season eight, we begin with Omar Mamoun, a technology consultant and cookie dough entrepreneur who takes us to a family-owned northern Vietnamese pho establishment where the richly spiced broth steals the show. Located in San Francisco's Richmond neighborhood, this is Turtle Tower Restaurant. My name is Kathy Pham. The name of the restaurant is Turtle Tower Restaurant. So the restaurant is named after a historical landmark in Hanoi. The story goes that a magical turtle rise from the bottom of the lake and presented the emperor with a sword. My father had been cooking all his life. His grandfather taught his mother and his mother taught him. All the recipes are as old as he can remember and is strictly Northern Vietnamese cuisine. My father would like to keep everything as authentic as possible, so he ordered the noodle to be specially made. Traditionally, pho has always been served in Hanoi without basil, bean sprout, or hoisin sauce, as it is still today, and how we serve it here at Turtle Tower. I've been in this business with my parents for 13 years. I now manage their operations. Corey and his wife Julie manages the Gary location. My mom and my sister manage the Larkin location and my husband manages the 6th Street location. All right, Omar, let's talk a little bit about the difference um, between the northern Vietnamese mm -hmm. cuisine, which is what uh, Turtle Tower is focused on, and sort of southern Vietnamese mm -hmm. cuisine. So the southern, as you know, um, style of pho is often accompanied with bean sprouts and uh, basil and, and, hoisin, and hoisin sauce, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Now with Turtle Tower, it's a Hanoi style, northern style pho. And with that style, it's really about the broth. And it's super minimal, and the broth is really meant to be the star of the show. And the thing to get at any of the Turtle Tower restaurants is the pho ga, which is a big bowl of steamy broth that just kind of comes up at, at at your face with aromas and it's just super super delicious and that's what they're known for the pho ga it's the chicken pho we are three different pho mm -hmm. you know the number one what i think is the most famous they the have the pho ga, ga. Oh. we order the number three that has the uh raw and uh cooked beef in it mm -hmm. and we are the number eight the number eight that has the cabernet marinated oh, the beef one. the red wine right mm -hmm. yeah i found number one and number three to be very similar in flavor as far as the broth goes mm -hmm. the noodles and the and the dish do not give any flavor it, the broth was very hot and it cooked the beef right away mm -hmm. 
but uh, it was just cooked beef, no flavor. We had to season the plates with the soy sauce or the hot shirasa sauce or whatever right, else they had on the right. table, and sliced jalapenos, except for the uh, marinated beef and wine that uh, had its own flavor that was a little bit different. The beauty is in the simplicity, and the, the broth is just so beautiful and it's really just you could really taste all the flavors of the anise and the ginger come through and that's really all you need mm. you don't really need you much more you want to grab the sriracha and just kind of let I it I mean in. maybe a little bit <laughs> of anise <laughs> yeah. see Pauline I is very quiet over there which is I making me nervous I didn't taste star anise I didn't mm. taste ginger mm -hmm. I got the um, I asked him I said what do you recommend and he goes fuck out and I go really mm -hmm. I go come on I go I'll eat anything as long as it doesn't kill me. Are you just saying that because I'm not Asian? <laughs> I go, I said, what do you eat? And he right. goes, get the one with the giblets. I'm like, done. <laughs> so nice. I get the one with the giblets. I do like the wider noodles in Northern right. Vietnamese mm -hmm. cuisine. They're easier to They're handle. They're a little silkier, mm -hmm. a little Tastes thinner. silkier right. and mm -hmm. everything like that. So I said, I go, just give me the jalapenos on the side. I'm not gonna touch it because I just wanna taste that broth. And I wasn't getting that. And I was a little bit disappointed with that because of course I'm looking around the restaurant and everyone's slurping it up, and I'm like, I'm not tasting that. And I tasted my friend's one where she got the rare beef, mm -hmm. and my other friend got just a plain old fagot. And I said, why? I'm just not getting it. If they would have sliced my giblets, because I was mm -hmm. getting whole giblets, if they would have sliced my giblets where I would have gotten giblets in every bite, I think that also it would have been a little bit different of an experience with my pho. Right. But I didn't get that. I had to put the hot oil. I had to put sriracha in it. And it was just, I was kind of bummed out. I was like, and I love pho, especially right. pho for lunch. Right. I, it might just be that I prefer the spiciness of Central and South mm -hmm. Vietnamese Well, and the other cooking, condiments. And, and the other condiments and right. everything like that. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not big on putting hoisin in my thing. Right. I like mm -hmm. tasting, mm -hmm. I like tasting yeah. broth. Yeah. I right. like simplicity yeah. of things, mm -hmm. but I just wasn't getting it, it from there. It just seems like it's the same broth for every uh, soup yeah. plate, and mm. they just add either meat or chicken or whatever. But uh, to me, it tasted very much one note. Yeah. I don't uh, think so. No, they're different broths. They're different yeah. broths, uh, definitely. Awesome. I mean, this place is an institution. It's been around since 2000. Everyone knows about it. Right, it's a right. thing. You know, the fuga. Right. Maybe you guys had off experiences. I don't know. The other thing that I ordered and discovered was this catfish marinated in turmeric. It's served to you in this cast iron pot that's kind of elevated, and below the cast iron is this flame that heats it up and sizzles right. the fish. On the side, you're served with green onions and dill. And then at the end, it's this really beautiful sort of broth that almost has a curry-like kind of texture to it. This thing, I tell you, was such a pleasant surprise. It was so good. The flavors are so clean, and the, the fish kind of crisps up. And then you- I'm hungry now. Oh, it's I, so, I so, so, so I would have gotten that, because I'm normally more uh -huh. of a pescatarian, but it's I was looking for sure. shrimp sure. or crab, which is indicative of northern Vietnam. Well, I had a- an experience with the spring rolls that uh, they were almost frozen. They were so cold mm -hmm. that made them all almost tasteless. Which they serve cold, yeah, right? Yeah, but they seem to be like they had made them a uh, long time in advance. I liked maybe. the spring rolls. It was, mm -hmm. it was, it was fresh for me, and I mm -hmm. liked it because they didn't have lots and lots of noodles in there, which right. that was good. And it could be because I was there on the hottest day of the year, practically. <laughs> what about value? Because that's, yeah. that's a good value. I yeah. mean, you're getting a nice big bowl of pho for like. What six eighty? Right, six seven dollars the most. <laughs> All right, Omar, this is your right. spot. Give us a quick summary. Super traditional northern Vietnamese food. Bang for your buck. Definitely go anytime. All right, Pauline. Um, there's other Vietnamese places that I'd much prefer in the city, but if I'm going to go back, I'm going to try something like what Omar said for the catfish. It's definitely a bang for your buck, but I wasn't too impressed. Okay, and Rafael. Yeah, uh, me too. I think it's a good value for your dollar but I will definitely not recommend it to anybody and I won't try to go there again. If you would like to try Turtle Tower Restaurant, it's on Geary between 21st Street and 22nd Street in San Francisco. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. From season 13, Darrell D.C. Coleman is a radio host by day and a hip-hop DJ by night who grew up in Oakland. His hometown spot is an eclectic gathering place serving expertly crafted cocktails in a market-driven California kitchen. For a night out on the town, this is Copper Spoon Cocktails and Kitchen. <laughs> Hi, 
My partner Carmen and I decided copper is a great metal. It's a healing metal and it also embodies what we believe Oakland is, which has always been a beautiful city, but it patinas and changes with time. I'm Vita Simone Strauss and this is Copper Spoon Cocktails and Kitchen. This has kind of been a quintessential location for Oakland as a watering hole. Uh, it was Art's Steakhouse prior, and then it was Art's Crab Shack. It's been a place that Oakland knows. We also have one of the biggest signs in all of Oakland. It's now considered a billboard. So Art's Steakhouse was predominantly run by a woman, and then when it became Art's Crab Shack, it was owned by Maluda, and she's a woman, powerful black woman. Carmen and I are really like-minded and created a friendship through what the future should be, which is workers' rights and equal rights for everybody. The menu here, definitely flavor forward, market driven, organic. We tried to use a lot of vegetables in creating dishes, things that make you feel good. It's not really health food, but if you use better ingredients, you come out with a better product. There's a pulse that happens when you're serving people where you insatiate people and they become completely fascinated with how you figured out their palate. It just makes me tick. It makes me excited to come to work every day. We want Oakland to come here. We want it to be a watering hole where People that don't look the same, people that aren't the same age group can strike up a conversation. So you remember this place as the Crab Shack? Absolutely, I remember being a kid. My mom used to drive the bus uh, uh, down the street from, from Arts and we would stop from time to time and dip in and grab stuff, whether or not it was the crab or the garlic bread. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of having those memories drove me to kind of go back one day and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna go to Arts. And when it wasn't there, I was a bit upset, mm -hmm. but then I noticed this brand new restaurant that was there and I've been going back ever since. What about the cocktails there? Uh, you know, I'm a bourbon guy, so Ooh, you know, I'm, either gonna, you. I'm <laughs> either gonna have my bourbon straight in a glass or I'm yeah. gonna have a Manhattan. They have a really great house Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Vita, she, you know, really kind of crafts that very well. They, all the cocktails we had were really delicious. And anytime I see passion fruit on a menu, I'll always get a passion fruit drink. So it was mezcal and passion fruit. So it had this like citrus and sweet, but, like smoky tequila flavor. I wanted to drink like six of those. And Rob, what about you? Classic martini guy. guy. There you go. <laughs> you go clear or you go dirty? I go dirty. Okay, mm -hmm. absolutely. Gotta be well, dirty. Well, he's an olive guy. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know You're what? Right. Yeah, exactly. If See I can get I'm blue saying? cheese in that olive Ooh. and it's dirty, I'm just happier than can be. Yum. Yeah. 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 That sounds delicious. So clearly the cocktail piece of Copper Spoon is working. What about the kitchen piece? What do oh, you I start off with the breads and spreads every time I go in. Mm -hmm. They come with different yeah. kind of sauces or spreads. One of them is the tomato jam and Bacon, uh, you know, the right amount of tomato, and can you ever really go wrong with bacon? Never. Mm -hmm. Not Never. in my opinion. No, then I'm a beats guy. I like beets. Mm -hmm. I love beets. Right. <laughs> so they have a, a dish called Beets by Dre, which is different colors and types of beets on a plate with this uh, smoked yogurt on the top. You are super healthy. I got a plate full of bacon. Three types of bacon. <laughs> bacon for the win, they called it. I yeah. love all the names at that place. Like, I love reading menus, and I'll just like yeah. read through, and I was like, wow, these people are super creative. But the bacon came three ways, mm -hmm. really crispy, perfectly salted and peppered. And then they had these lardens that were in mm. a sweet sauce. Did you guys mm -hmm. have the bacon? No, I didn't, oh I didn't have that Oh my goodness, bacon. but I like the way you look at me while I talk about bacon. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, everybody's hungry. <laughs> and then it came with pork Thank belly. You. And usually I don't like pork belly because it's kind of fatty, mm -hmm. but this pork belly was like amazing. It tasted like carnitas and little cubes. Yeah. I had deviled eggs. Oh. Okay. I gotta tell you, the most beautiful deviled eggs you've ever seen. I don't know what was in those deviled eggs. <laughs> there was a hidden flavor. Mm -hmm. Two of us liked it, one of us did not mm -hmm. like it so much. Mm -hmm. But I moved on, I moved on. <laughs> and um, everything else I had was absolutely delicious. And including a salad. Mm -hmm. They had a bitter green yeah. and a buttermilk dressing to die for. Mm -hmm. So main course, I did the, the white fish really kind of like flaky, you know, and they had this lemongrass broth. Mm, you can just take a little like bit of it and pour it on top of the yeah. fish or yeah. whatnot. It's a great taste. My mom taste. got that, and it was a big portion too. Yeah. Right. She was really happy to save some of that. I had the scallops, kind of like a fish, but not a fish. It's well, a shellfish. Shell yeah, yeah. yeah, it's in the water. It's it's shell, doesn't, yeah. It doesn't swim, yeah. <laughs> but it was. they were really delicious. It came with this truffle turnip mash thing, and I'm really happy that I like to eat all of my family's food because <laughs> my brother got the lamb burger, yes. and I wish that I had had that whole thing to myself, but it was so delicious. It had a brioche bun and some like mm -hmm. yogurt mint sauce mm -hmm. on top. Yeah. And he gave me a little piece and I was like, all right, give me some more. Mm -hmm. Their buns were really good. And I was like, where'd you get these buns, hun? 
<laughs> they were so good. <laughs> Sounds like a song. Yeah, Where'd it you is. Get the uh, what song is it, DJ? That would be, uh, I'm not, uh, Sir Mix a Lot. There yeah. we go. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Sir Mix a Lot. Where'd Maybe got lot. back. Yeah. Exactly. How am I, I like delayed on that? I don't I know. I don't know. It was a lot. Yeah. I like big buns and I cannot lie. Yeah, that's facts. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> All right, what did you have for a main course? The halal chicken. Mm. It is possibly the best chicken I've had that is not Thai chicken mm. because it had a lot of flavor, it had a nice little crispiness to the outside, juicy. I dream about that chicken. <laughs> I, I do. I will go back for that chicken. And what about dessert? Ooh. So I do the carrot cake mm -hmm. in there. Yes. And that carrot cake was, oh was fantastic. Yes. And the cream cheese frosting. Yeah, the cream cheese frosting mm -hmm. was really good. It was a perfect cake to frosting ratio. Mm -hmm. It was you know, right on right. point. And Absolutely. what about value? I thought it was a lot of value for the money. And I also think that the experience there is worth paying for. It's the party you want to be at. Mm -hmm. It's like it had an active bar. It had beautiful people, mm -hmm. interesting uh, staff, interesting people hanging out there. Mm -hmm. Everybody was having a good time. There's a vibe there. Everyone who was in there was super welcoming, super mm -hmm. nice. The music is usually really mm -hmm. good. All right, yeah. your spot, wrap it up for us. Uh, if you want to go to a place with a really great vibe, check out Copper Swing Cocktails and Kitchen in Oakland, and make sure you talk about that uh, bourbon drink behind the bar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Julia. All right, definitely start with a lot of drinks. The mezcal drink is amazing, and I would always go back for that. And Rob? Don't let the Crab Shack sign fool you. <laughs> you walk in, and it's like you're walking into a party that you want to stay all night at. If you would like to try Copper Spoon Cocktails and Kitchen, it's on Broadway at 40th in Oakland. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $30. Finally, from season 10, writer and performer Brian Copeland flies us to Fremont for old world classics that exude pure charm. A romantically lit family-owned restaurant that delights with flambéed cherry jubilee and escargot, this is Papillon. Papillon means butterfly. It's something that's free, something that is beautiful. Hi, I'm Charles Foreman, manager and owner of Papillon Restaurant in Fremont. We opened it up 37 years ago. My father, mother, and my brother actually opened the restaurant up. Right now, uh, my son and my daughter also help out. My wife is executive chef, so it's all in the family. My name is Nietzsche Foreman. Whatever I make, it's what I would eat. When I see customer enjoy the food, it makes me happy. I try to keep the traditional dish. We have a lot of customers that love our classic dishes, but then I also have a special that I do that's more modern. I think our dessert selection reflects some of the old style desserts. The newer generation is it's something new that they haven't seen before. And it's a fun thing for them to see. We have a lot of special events that have taken place at the restaurant. The other day we had a wedding proposal. We do a lot of proposals and uh, so far everyone said yes, so that's a good thing. I do feel like I'm carrying out somewhere of a legacy. So many people have been here and so many people have shared special experiences with us and uh, I feel like I'm gonna do this as long as I can. Maybe another 37 years, who knows. All right, Brian, when I said classic, this place mm -hmm. is classic. You've been going for two decades? Which is odd because I'm only 26, <laughs> but yes, it is a classic French restaurant, and uh, they do a lot of traditional things that you don't see done in restaurants today. For example, escargot, and uh, the, the garlic in the butter ratio is perfect, because a lot of times you'll get them and there's just too much garlic. Right. And what I like to do is, I don't know if this is kosher or not to do, but I, I like to break the bread and dip it. You know, you, know you got to do it. See, I don't know if in France they allow you to do that. We were you tempted know. to try the escargot or the frog legs, but my husband and I decided to try the ahi tuna instead mm. with homemade chips, which was lightly salted, but the ahi tuna was sitting on top of a, a bed of mixed greens with a raspberry vinaigrette. Oh, delicious. I could have eaten 10 of those <laughs> if I had the, the tummy room but for it. But you had a lot more coming up, oh, I can yes. tell you, in this place. I was not going to go with escargot, but <laughs> foie gras, since well, there it's you only go. Mm -hmm. back on yeah. the menu. Excellent, I would have liked it a little thicker. It came with a fruit compote that was warm and a balsamic mm -hmm. sauce that we were actually tipping the bowl with our spoons to finish off. Mm. <laughs> kind of their signature thing is fr this French onion soup that they do. Oh, yes, it's exactly. absolutely amazing. I, if, if I was told I had like an hour to live and I could have sex or have this French onion soup, I'd have to think about it. <laughs> I really would. So the way they do this is they bring it out in a, a little white bowl and it's got a puff pastry over the top. And then you stick the spoon in it and you see the, the, the steam come out and, and they're caramelized onions. And, it's just, and I don't even like French onion soup. That's the amazing thing. I never Audrey's liked tongue it. Is 
hanging out over there. Yes. So. But it was that, excellent. It was very good. Oh, you all had it. It was very good. It had the so much cheese and it melted. It was one of the best French onion mm -hmm. soups I've had. I actually liked their sweet potato soup. Creamy, buttery, bright orange, mm -hmm. and they had a special twist and wrote papillon um, in mm -hmm. the soup and a butterfly. It was really cute. The sauces were excellent. We got a for an appetizer, a lobster ravioli. We cleaned the plate oh, with that's our great. bread. Oh, it that's great. The sauce, so you can just drink sauce the sauce. Delectable. That's how lift and licks the plate. What about main courses? They make a beef wellington that is absolutely marvelous. What it is is it's a filet mignon with the golden brown puff pastry. Not too dry, and it's very difficult to do from what I understand. It was that very, was very good. Divine. It was a perfect cut of meat, cooked on the medium rare side. And the other thing is the, the duck breast. It's two really good sized duck breasts. You know, there is a berry compote that they yeah. put over the top of it that, that's just marvelous. Again, it's the color and the texture. Unfortunately, I wasn't a fan of the duck breast. It was very dry and I was waiting for a pop of flavor. Mm -hmm. And the vegetables that came with it were very basic and simple. And again, I was waiting for flavor. So I actually had to drown my food in the sauce, cherry Pinot Noir reduction sauce, and that was excellent. I agree with Audrey that the vegetables on the side are very, very basic. And mm -hmm. for such a lovely food and quality, could be upgraded with a little more modern vegetables, a little more. Well, how many uh, places do beef Wellington anymore? You got exactly. Think you know, Which really is why we eat it's, not, it's classic, tradition. and yeah. you don't get it very many places. Right. We also ordered the special of the day, which was halibut, and it came on pasta and a cream sauce with mm. prawns. Mm. And we were four of us, so we could order a lot, and we were all reaching over the table to have a dab at this. And you enjoyed some wine, I know, because this is an extensive wine list. It's leather bound, very large, very extensive. I ordered the sauterne for the foie gras. Let's do desserts mm -hmm. because, you know, how many places bring fire to the table? What I like there is the Cherry's Jubilee. Again, that's something I've only seen on television and in the movies, mm -hmm. where they actually bring it over table side and they do it flambe, and yeah. it's mm -hmm. just, they serve, serve it over ice cream, and it's, it's just amazing. And the colors and the fire, I mean, I don't know any place that does that. <laughs> we were tempted by the flambe, but we actually ordered the macaroon ice cream sandwiches, and they all had individual um, sauces. We did save room and picked the classic baked Alaska, which was flamed at the table. Mm -hmm. How nice to have that flaming, and how can you go wrong with it's ice cream show. and meringue? Mm -hmm. and it was yes. old world service, mm -hmm. old world mm -hmm. atmosphere, old world dishes. I think a few things could be updated and keep the same classic. Right. Mm -hmm. I would return to this restaurant just because of the service. It was very friendly to walk into, and they checked in with us routinely, and we were there for about two and a half hours. So two and a half hours because you drove the pace of the meal, not them driving the We pace. drove the pace of the meal. Mm -hmm. It's your restaurant, Brian, so give us a quick summary why people should go to Papillon. Look mm -hmm. for a place to propose, or Valentine's Day, or birthday, to bring family. That is the place to go to enjoy a, an evening and a fine meal that you're not gonna find any place else. All right, Nathina. Special occasion, excellent old world food, classic, service, classic French. I would like to see a little updating. All right, and Audrey? Celebrating something romantic, you want to feel wined and dined, and you happen to be in the East Bay, definitely check out this restaurant. If you would like to try Papillons, it's on Mission Boulevard in Fremont. It's open for lunch Monday through Friday and every night for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. If you missed these places the first time around, we hope you've enjoyed a look back at three great spots in the Bay Area. Now you have a chance to check them out. Thanks to Omar Mamoun from Season 8, who brought us along to Turtle Tower Restaurant for Northern Vietnamese pho that's all about the broth. And Darrell D.C. Coleman, who shared fantastic cocktails and California cuisine at Oakland's Copper Spoon Cocktails and Kitchen. And Brian Copeland, who brought us the delights of old world elegance back to life at his spot in Fremont, Papillon. So join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. We really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and my notes on the wines we're drinking today. Cheers. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta. And now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them.
Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. At Redwood Credit Union, we help people achieve their financial goals together, offering customized, full-service, personal, and business banking for the North Bay and San Francisco. Redwood Credit Union. 